Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV7. You're watching a show called Conversations with Fred. Every week we have different people from the community come in and we try to give you a little bit of advice occasionally, help, and interesting facts. It's going to make your life hopefully a little bit easier. This week I have one of my favorite people, Bob Willis, who I taught with in the early 80s. He's been in the system over 30 years, as, and everyone knows Mr. Willis as a counselor. Bob, thank you for being with us today, okay? Happy now, to be here. Well, how about we start off with, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you went to the school, your wonderful family, and by the way, thank your son for serving in the service, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and anything you want to share, make Bob Willis kind of a personality here. Uh, okay. Um, I, well, as you said, I've been here over 30, in the county over okay. 30 oh, years. Oh, you, you were here Started in the early 80s, right? 85. 85. Started okay. 1985. At the Canard Building. And we were, you and I were at Canard mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the hall from each yes, other. Yes, yes. And, um... I was business education, computer science, right. and then occasionally they'd throw in a math class. Over there. <laughs> um, but you're braver uh, than I was. <laughs> yeah, and then left counseling or left for be a school counselor at Sutlersville Middle School in okay. '96. Okay, and then came to Queen Anne's County High School in 2004. And, and you've been there since. That's where I've been since. Kind of an institution there. Yeah. Now, just to share with people, married. How many kids? Four. Got four. four How many kids? grandkids? I've got five. You've got me outnumbered. You're beating me by one already. Is that right? Yeah. And you have one uh, son. I, I don't say where he is, but I, if I understand it, special forces, army yeah, special forces, army special forces, overseas deployment. Bragg. He's currently deployed out. Yeah. Okay. And please tell him thank you for serving. I had a, a, you and I have talked about this. I had basic training at Fort Bragg in 1966, and the special forces were there. Yes, and they used to laugh at the yeah. trainees. They come over with their braids, <laughs> you wimps, would they? And they were right. Bob, look, at, yeah. I've said this, I've had this, your superintendent of schools on, I've had the president of Chesapeake College on, and some of the private schools. How in the world did you educators make it over the last 18 months when you had every, the rules were changing every week? How'd you do it? Well, that's, that's a good question, okay. because it's one where I think... Um, and I ended up having, when all this happened, I ended up having the senior class. Oh, you, oh, you had the graduating class. So I ended up having that graduating class picking up to it. But we did have a little bit of, a, you know, I had them as juniors, and there was a lot of things that we would normally do that we tried to just start thinking, okay, I know what, where they need to be. Right, right. I know what needs to happen. We're not here. How do we at least how can we supplement or do something right, right you know what i mean so we started looking at some of the major things that needed to occur for from a counseling role and from a college application role that need to happen and information need to get out and then just tried to do online um zoom calls okay. you know and okay. just tried to and a lot of replication just just offering mm -hmm. that yes. three times a week, okay. offering different, uh, and then just have those students join in when they could, trying to put it out through email, push out all that information. And then, um, you know, we use, for college application, we use Naviance okay. you know, out of the guidance office and everything. And then, So it could all be done on computer. So a lot could be, you know, was real helpful. To be Bob, last year, and I don't know, did they have a graduation proms and things like that or not? Were they, were they allowed to have Had those? graduation. Oh, they didn't have a graduation. Pretty much had graduation. Oh, good. There it was really nice. I mean, you had to do the social distancing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. had all the masks, but... You know, it was one of those where it occurred during the, um, in the morning, because we oh, had a virtual early. day, kids, okay. kids were home, so we had it in the morning, had kids distance, but the, it was outside. Okay. And it Fairly was, safe. And it was really nice to have it okay. outside, mm -hmm. have it in the morning, because we used to have the evening graduations, yes, yes. and you know, you'd have to sit there and have to make that call. Is there going to <laughs> be a thunderstorm, you didn't have a thunderstorm coming storm. up? <laughs> well, there's rarely do you have the thunderstorms in the morning. No, you're in so good shape. So it was really, it was just, it was a real nice event. And it yeah. was, I mean, I felt bad for seniors all the way through that year. Well, they, they got cheated they in senior year, didn't they? I, I had a ninth mm -hmm. grade, I had a uh, granddaughter who was going to ninth grade, so uh, down in Eastern, her first year of high school. And she really, I feel, got cheated, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of athletics, theater, drama, or whatever. Because, right. and I had him at my house for half of the year. Being with Pop Pop, 
for six hours a day is not as good as being with your peer group or having professionals like you that can help them. Because they were on the computer, and as well as the teachers did, it's not the school environment. I'm right. sorry, you know. Right. And, and then the other thing I, don't, I'm, I want to compliment you all. I know my wife retired because of last year, I think. I mean, the attendance policy changes, the grading policy changes, politicians got involved. You poor educators, I, I don't know how you did it, because it, it seemed like to me things were changing every week. And, and it had to be, because we hadn't dealt with this since, what, 1917 or something. Well, I, and I think from a high school perspective, you look at, you know, a teacher knows their subject, they know the curriculum needs to be presented. Right. And, and then you just have to kind of say, okay, how yeah. do I do this with what I have? Bob, how in the world, having taught many years, how in the world did they teach at some point during the school year, they were teaching live students and virtual at the same time, am I correct? There was some of that. A short, yeah. yeah. I mean, that must have been very difficult, I don't know. Yeah, and a lot of it, I mean, you had some students, and I think some parents, some students thought that, Oh, they're coming back, so it's all going to be back to normal. Mm. Well, you still had half the class that was they weren't there showing virtually. up. No. So sometimes you had students that were in the class, and they had to be on their computer virtually so they right. could get the information that okay. was still being okay. presented. It was a, uh, but look, you could still get the assistance yeah. when you you had that benefit. I think you. I saw you before COVID. You didn't have a gray hair in your head. I see you after the COVID, <laughs> and you're beginning to look like the old man. The beard, <laughs> the beard looks good. The beard looks good. That was COVID also. Uh, okay. <laughs> now, Bob, uh, one of the reasons I asked you on the show, and you and I have talked off the air and on the phone about this, I'm reading in the national press, and I have a daughter who's a vice principal. She says, Dad, there seems to be a little bit of an, and you're going to tell me whether I'm right or wrong. There seems to be a little, because the kids have been out of school for a year or 18 months, whatever the figures are, we're seeing a little bit more fights, some destruction of, apparently a fad around the country is, I'm not saying it's Queen Anne's, but around the country, mm -hmm. they go in the restrooms, rip off towel things and destroy things and film it on t TikTok. I mean, before we get to some tips to parents, are we seeing, are you seeing a little adjustment problem here? Well, I think we're seeing a little bit. And, you know, like, we've had these social media events before, and you're right, the TikTok thing was the, the bathroom. In right. fact, I think just recently in the last couple of days, there's a TikTok thing where they've put out every month there's some sort of thing they should do. Oh, you know, okay. like This is being encouraged by... People. And, and, and it's just social media. It's people just trying to get attention. Attention, stir people up. And, and that's all. The problem is that, you know, there's the, there's the social media that's probably not your reality. Right. Um, and then there is, when you come to school, that is your reality. And when you take that behavior from one avenue to the You're other. You're breaking the law. Well, there's consequences. Yes, yes. And there's going to be consequences for that type of thing. So whatever's out there on TikTok that they say to do in October, here we are, October 1st. <laughs> well, what's a new I trick? I it's a my... new one now. <laughs> I know what it is, but don't we don't say need, it. We don't don't need say to it. give it any no, attention. No. And there's another one for November and December and January. Who is this? Are so, these students doing this or this adult? Who's I, doing it? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. No idea. No idea. But, are we seeing any of it in Queen Anne's County? Um, I think we had one or two incidents. Oh, small incidents. A couple small incidents Good. there in Good. September. But, you know what I mean? It's the, it happens. And then what TikTok doesn't put out is what happens afterwards. Oh. And then Suspended, the reality thrown of it, out of school, whatever. The reality of it is there is there is consequences, consequences yes. for your actions. Good. There, there should be. Is. There should be. Yep. Would you say, again, I'm going to ask you for some tips here in a minute, but would you say October 1... What you see at Queen Anne's County High School, we're almost back to normal. Is that a f I mean, obviously we have to wear masks yeah. and we have to have them on the buses. Uh, we, do you think we're, what do you think? Oh, we, yeah. yeah oh, no, okay. I think, you know, you see some differences. I mean, I, I think um, years past, you know, prior, there was a little bit more spiritness in the hallways okay. and okay. things like that. But and that might be some due to the mask now. But right. yeah, I mean, it seems to be fairly normal. Instructions back, teachers are rolling. Okay. You know, we had, um, our, uh, we just had interims go out. And so kids know where they are academically. You know, they do a lot with the eligibility or the ineligibility list. Right, right. And last year, you know, we saw that list and it was... Took off. Crazy. Mm -hmm. it's sad. Now it's not bad. Oh, good. Almost back, right back to where we had been, maybe even a little better. 
than Excellent. Before. So you think so, kids, what you see at the high school, hey, oh yeah. Fred, we're back to normal. We'll keep Parents, moving. relax. We're moving gonna, in the right direction. Yeah, and yeah. We're, you know, we're trying to help them do the math, mask thing correctly yeah. and adjust a little bit. Good. Yeah. Bob, one of the, and for everybody knows, Bob is very kind. He ran across the street probably or drove across. He's got a thousand kids over there waiting to hear it from him. So we'll just go a couple more minutes. A number of parents have said to me, I even got an email, uh, which I very seldom do in this program, said, I'm having some problems getting the kids back to normal. Everything from getting out of bed, homework, getting the clubs and organizations, just getting in the spirit of things again. As a counselor with lots of great experience, are there some tips you could give parents? Or, or I, had, I had one, I won't use their name, one, one of the teachers came in and said, Fred, Kids are resilient. Mm -hmm. They just got through a terrible epidemic. Oh, well, I know we still have it, but they got through a process that's closed us out. Mm -hmm. They're so young and so resilient. They will keep spinning and get back to normal. Any tips you'd give parents to help them get through? I mean, I hear people say, I'm not going to let my kid wear a mask because they can't breathe. Oh, they get mask breaks. We, we've built into a system things mm -hmm. that will make it. Any tips or advice you give to parents that they can make this process easier? In terms of, as far as just getting back to yeah, school. Yeah, getting back getting in the routine. swing of things. I mean, I, mean I, I don't think there's any substitute for having a solid, healthy routine. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. I think one is, you know, we, and we hear a lot of times with, you know, the kids, there's anxiety and all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, you know, the, the other thing, too, is um, when this all started, a lot of people, and I see a, a good number of people, still have that spirit of fear. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and, and rightfully there's, so. There's right? that it's, it's spirit some scary, of fear. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, you can go back age, and we've talked about that a lot, but you can go back age old. I mean, I think it goes back to biblical times. Sure. You know, there's always you been have fear a spirit and anxiety. Of fear, yeah. But to have uh, a, a power, love, and a sound mind. So if you give in to this, you, and if you look through that, if you have that spirit of fear, well, then you're going to lose your power. You're okay. going to lose your ability to be able to do things. Deal with things, yeah. You're going to lose your compassion for other people. And if you give in to it too much, well, then you just, you just it's gonna break some, down. do some crazy things. Well, I so, like, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. So I think with that, uh, uh, you know, get back into that routine. You're coming back, to, you're back in school. Things are going to work out. Don't don't be don't overly panic. fearful. Don't okay. panic with things. And then maybe you know we spent kids, all of us, teachers, kids. We all spent all this time on the computer, on sure. the phone. Mm -hmm. or, you know, trying to get assignments submitted. Maybe take a break from it a little okay. bit okay. in the evenings. Turn it off. If if you're if you're feeling that anxiety level up, I mean, a lot of times when we're talking about kids with anxiety, I'd say. We've talked through their day, and they have this, they're on the phone, All the and time. They're, they're texting. And a lot of times it's the parents bugging them, uh, well, leave me alone. <laughs> but when you think about it, when we were in school, mm -hmm. we didn't have the phone. No, no. So if, we're, if there was drama at school with friends, at 2.30 when we got on the bus, it was, we left it behind. It was over. And we picked it up the next day. Well, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen now. No. It's 24-7 you know, now. Right? And, yeah. So then just build in that time, say, we're going to put that phone down. Okay. And, and I mean, I think the student, I don't think parents, they might need to mandate it, but I think kids need to do that, high school kids especially, okay. do that voluntarily for yourself. I, I've, I've been reading recently, I go to bed at about 11. It says the hour before you go to bed, turn off the computer, yeah. Yeah. put your cell phone down. It affects the brain in such a way that your brain is working too hard. Yeah. Now, even though TV's not the best, it's better than the phone and the computer because you relax a little bit. Put on that TCM or just get away from the daily drama that you deal with with phones and computers. Yeah. And that's good. And, you know, give yourself some time. You know, get your backpack and all that other stuff ready the night before. For the next morning. So that when the rat race of the morning comes and the rush of the morning comes, you can... You, that's off the table. You just pick it up and yeah. go. You're not looking for your notebook yeah. and your computer yeah. and everything. It's all else. set up and ready to yeah. go. Yeah. No, it's, it's terrible. It's all that kind of common yeah, okay. sense stuff. Yeah. Bob, if people are watching this show 
and they're saying, hey, what Mr. Willis says a lot of sense. If they think their child is having problems, can they just call you or a counselor at the high school? And sure. I'll give out, it's 410-758-0500. Mm -hmm. I've got a student in school. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk to their counselor and they'll be able to help them out. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I think that's generally for most kids. But okay. you have others that, I mean, a lot of times are struggling with a lot of things. Yes. And some of those warning signs are, like one of the big ones is, hey, when parents stop for a little bit and they think, you know, they used, we used to talk a lot more, yeah, now I don't yeah. hear anything from yeah. them. They're not really communicating with me. That's a red flag. Okay. That should be a red flag that say, wait a minute, I don't think they're talking as much. Maybe I should check with school and see what's going on. Okay. I mean, now we can monitor grades with that, with Parent Portal. And get right online, right? You can see up to the minute with Power okay. School what those grades are. And you can kind of see if our grades dropping off. There's there's all kinds of warning signs that sometimes you just have to pause for a minute, pay attention to. Okay. And then you know, give them some time. Yeah. But the important thing for parents there is that they can call the high school. Mm -hmm. They can ask for help, and yep. you would give them the right direction. You know, yeah, either with you, or the sure. parent, which is good, yeah. and they will help them out. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. We're <laughs> October first. We have a homecoming parade tonight. We have a homecoming football game at Queen Anne's tonight, oh, yeah. and yep. then we have a first Friday. That's hope. And I don't like, uh, my personal opinion, I don't mind wearing masks, but that's hope. Next time I see you, your beard keeps growing. It looks, it looks oh, great. Oh, I don't know. I, might, you, I might take it off. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Keep it on. I've had mine for 40 years. Anyway, uh, the point being, hopefully next time we have you on, you can say, Fred, we're back, okay? Yeah. Well, look at Bob thanking. I promised you. Look, I've, I've done this eight minutes earlier. I promised you I'd have you back by 11.30, so there's thousands of students. All right. Thank you. And again, I want to tell all the parents out there, the Queen Anne's County Board of Ed, if you're worried about your student, and Bob has just talked to you about some warning signs, help them with routine, help them put some of the social media down. But if you're not sure what to do, call and speak to your high school counselor or your middle school, or your elementary school counselor. They will help you. They'll help all of us, all right, get through all of this, all right? Bob, thank you very much. Yeah. And 30 thank plus you. years in education, you're still looking better, as good a shape still as when you start, all right? We'll keep going. Thank Took a new freshman class and... Oh, you're ready for four more years? We'll four more. Okay, well, <laughs> Bob, I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I'm Fred McNeil. You've been watching Conversations with Fred. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.